If you have ever wanted to row a drift boat, you're gonna learn everything you wanna to know to be a pro. to start by backing in. Scott, what do I need to know about backing in my boat? Go to a church parking lot and practice first <laughs> so you don't clog up the boat ramp with people. So on drift boats, how far into the water do I need to be to launch my boat? That's probably a big question. Yeah, so you don't want to put your wheels too far in with a drift boat unlike motor boats. Um, you try to keep your bearings out of the water so just you know get your wheels a couple inches as well in the water like so and push the boat off. That works. And then you always, you know, if you have your boat cover on or something, you want to take that off prior to coming down here, get your boat prepped, you know, with my boat right now, I just have, you know, two quick straps to take off. So I'm not taking extra time. And you're typically putting your oars in just like that now so that if you have to you can row yep exactly and then some people like matt just launched his some people leave their strap on to to launch the boat um, i take mine off and just push it out and jump in you just do it al fresco yeah probably safer to do it you know your first few times leaving the strap on and That's basically all you need to know about rowing a boat, a drift boat, right there. Scott, I've pulled my boat, backed it in, took out some anchor rope, and it's parked. You always want to make sure you, you put extra rope out, um, just in case the flows fluctuate so your boat doesn't go down the river unmanned. That would be bad. So from that I understand you do not want your boat to take off without you. Yeah, that, that, that would be that bad. That kind of makes sense? Okay. <laughs> I was wondering about that. So before we get started, for real, the intent of our video today is to really just show you some techniques. If you're new to rowing, or even if you've rowed for a long time and you wanna refresh your skills. Number one suggestion is don't bring your brand new boat here to the Green River A section, which is where we are. It's a secret spot, you might've heard of it. There's a lot of things that you need to do first. So I would say first, and Scott, you can chime in, but take your boat to the local pond or lake and learn some of these techniques that we're gonna talk about. You gotta know the basics of how to make your boat go in the direction you want it to go and not hit crap you don't wanna hit. Right off the bat, place like this, Scott, why do I need to be careful right here? So right here, you have, the boat currently is in really slow water and then you can see there's a big push of water right there. Um, I have a, a fellow guide has sunk his boat right here before. So he came into this too aggressively, knocked the guy in the front of the boat out. That guy reached over, grabbed the side of the boat, and the boat sunk right there in like five seconds. Anytime you're coming into a fast current, you don't want to, you wouldn't want to come in at the angle we're coming in right now. You'd want to turn the boat at a, at a less aggressive angle and, and enter the water like that.
and we're off. Scott, why don't you explain what we're coming up with this back eddy here? Okay, so right now I'm in the middle of the river down the main current. Over to our right here is a back eddy current. Um, I mean, if nobody's in there, it's okay to, to come in at the top, but you know, the standard etiquette is to go to the bottom and then work your way back up the back eddy. And then that, you know, allows everyone else to have kind of an equal fishing opportunity through it. So this one's kind of a tricky one because you got this big boulder here in the middle. So I'm just gonna go right below that and then pull into the eddy here. That was some fine maneuvering. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> But then, yeah, so you'd come into the eddy, you know, down here. And then if I was fishing up, you know, I'd, if I was fishing dry or dry dropper, I'd have both my guys fish off the left side and run the, run the flies back up to the top right through here. All right, so when you're rowing a drift boat, you basically want to point at danger and then go as slow as possible into that danger. So if you do end up hitting it, you're gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna go up and I'm actually gonna to touch this thing and show you how if you come in slow, you can still be safe coming into something. So number one thing people do wrong is they're coming into something and they start to panic. You know, if you don't think you're gonna make it, you know, they, they start pushing around it where that water does not want me to hit that. So it's pushing me off of it, but because I came in slow, it, I was able to safely get around it. And then you could film Charlie coming into it too right there. I don't know, Charlie's a little sketch. <laughs> All right, so when you're, when you're rowing your boat and you just want to take a break, you don't want to just leave your oars in the water. If your oars are in the water, this oar could get pinned, the downstream oar could get pinned or hit a rock and then that could shoot this oar up super hard, like it could take your head off, literally. So when you're just taking a break on the oars, I either bring the oars all the way in the boat like this, or, you know, typically I just tuck them up underneath my knees and then just rest and I can tie flies or do whatever I need to do, so. Okay, so we're coming up to some other anglers and boats. How do I want to handle meeting other boats on the river? That's a big question. Yeah, so you definitely want to, you know, follow the golden rules. The number one thing to keep in mind, you know, you wouldn't want to row over this guy's indicators right here. Or this guy on the left is pulled over. That's perfect etiquette to be re-rigging so you're not in the middle of the traffic zone where everyone wants to come through. You know, if I'm just trying to get away from these guys, what I would do is go wide, you know, go river right around this, far from them, and then if you're coming behind somebody, you want to tell them you're coming behind so they don't hit you with their back cast, you know? So just, you know, politely let them know you're, you're trying to pass behind them. But some rivers, it's cool to anchor up and fish to fish, but on the green, it's considered bad etiquette here. So if you look, all the guides here are all pulled over to the banks when they're re-rigging or doing stuff. Come behind you, Corey. How are you? Doing good? Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so another safety thing is if you're if you forget to pull up your anchor all the way that anchor could catch on something So definitely not something you want to have going on. Hey, Jimmy your anchors down oh, thanks, Scotty. Yep, I rode uh, quite a ways with my anchor down the other day. Oh, it definitely happens If you're in doubt of where to go look for the V as in victory To shoot down the middle of that V. That's where the majority of the water is gonna go. So if you don't know where to go, that's probably your safest route. So Charlie just went through a dangerous spot there. To be safe, you want to look for a V as in victory and just point your boat down that V and just come in it, into it nice and slow. Now, that rapid was called Bridge Rapid. If you look back up, you can see the line Charlie took. He dodged that big boulder and pretty scary little line he took. Good old Charlie. Epic. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> you've got your new boat out. You've tried some uh, maneuvers at the lake and the river and the lake, the same 
concepts for rowing. You want to make sure that you follow what Scott here is going to tell you because I would mess it up. So Scott's going to go through a bunch of rowing strategies, techniques, maneuvers with the boat and show you how to get the boat moving in the direction you want it to go. All right, so kind of the basics of a drift boat, you've got the bow, the stern, the starboard, and the port side. There's a few strokes. Most important is pulling, where you, you're making the boat go backwards, so you're pointing at danger or where you're headed and slowing the boat down. Uh, one of the things people do wrong is dig their oars way too deep, and so you're spending like way too much energy if you're, if you're digging deep, so you just barely want to get those oars dipped underwater. So the opposite of, of pulling is pushing. And that's just rowing basically the opposite way. And it's kind of like just throwing little, little jab punches. Just nice little strokes. Um, you can also feather your oars. That's where you come in at an angle and then push and rotate your wrist as you row through. That's just gonna give you a lot of extra power while you're rowing and help you finesse the boat a little more. So right now I'm gonna push, just get some speed going here. So right here, if, if you were fishing, we're, we're in a back eddy current, so the river's moving back up here. Um, so if I was rowing right here for anglers, I'd have the guy in the back casting, you know, if it was a dry fly about that angle, and the guy in the front casting about that angle, and they, I would have them mend up to the right, and then you would have to basically follow their drifts with your boat. So, you know, you might need to push here and there to, to catch up with it when their flies get into faster stuff, or or pull to, to slow it down. Another technique is called the crab stroke. So if my boat's getting too close to the bank here, I put the stern of the boat away from where I want to go and then pull with one oar into the boat and the other one's still just doing the, the back stroke. Uh, this is definitely a more advanced thing to learn out of the boat and takes definitely a lot of practice. It's kind of got to work on getting those Popeye muscles to, to be able to do it. It's, Looks pretty easy on video, but it's it's a lot harder than than you think. It's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your belly at the same time. But those are kind of you know the the basic strokes when you're when you're rowing a boat. Okay, so right now my boat's in slow water. I'm still in a back eddy, and I'm going to come into this fast current. If I come in at this straight angle into this moving current this way, it's going to throw the boat hard. So right now I need to turn the boat the same way the water's going and just slowly ease into it. If you come in at a steep angle, it'll throw the boat hard, might throw you know, one or both of your anglers out and definitely a, a dangerous situation. But you can see I'm just easing into it, didn't wanna take a, an abrupt angle. So drift boats are pretty easy to sink. I would say out here on an average year, we see about five boats go down. So they're definitely, you know, it's, a raft is a lot safer where these hard side boats can definitely get put underwater pretty easily. You know, the things that can sink your boat would be if your anchor were to drop in a rapid, you would, in catch, you would pop a wheelie and be down to the bottom of the river in like five seconds. If I were to break an oar, you know, I have, I do have a spare under there, but it would take me, you know, a good solid 40 seconds of panicking to get it out, get it all put together. So that's definitely a, an easy way to, to sink your boat. Sometimes your oar locks will break or widen out. And then if, you know, if you were to, pop your oar out like that, like you can't do anything right now, right? So you'd be in big trouble if, if you lose an oar, you're basically have no control over your boat. So if you do get in a spot like that, you know, one of the, and you're in calmer water, the safest thing to do would be to, to drop anchor so you can um, get your spare oar set up for your boat. All right, so we just fished that run and Curtis managed to tie a huge rat's nest in his line. So I, I pulled over here to the bank. <laughs> Um, once I got that fixed, now I'm, I'm going to go back out, but I, I've got to look behind me. That's always like number one rule. You don't want to jump into merging traffic. So I see this boat coming, so I'm going to wait for him to go through. And then as soon as he's gone past, then the coast is clear for me to pick up anchor and, and move back out. But that's, that's etiquette 101 right there. So right here, I'm going to send the boat into the V as in victory. That's your safest line going in. And then I'm going to row backwards, so I'm pulling the whole time to slow the boat. And then any of these bigger waves, I'm going to pitch the nose of my boat into them so I don't take water in. Wait a minute, I just got a bunch of water. <laughs> Oh, 
This rapid is roller coaster. <laughs> Sometimes you never know these things, Brig. You don't you don't know why they name things oh, like good that. One. All right, so down below us, we've got Colby Crossland. He's guiding a customer right now. Looks like he's fishing either a nymph rig or a dry dropper. I'm not 100% sure yet. So Colby's back rowing right now to slow his boat down for the drift. And then he's going to have his client mend upstream here soon to, to set it up or, yep, or recast. So Colby's trying to slow it down so he can get it the proper angle for the, for the fishermen there. Colby's resetting now. Colby, he's been doing this for a couple weeks. He's, he's zooming in so I can see what flies you're fishing. You may remember Colby from such podcasts as Shop Talk podcast of three years ago, whenever it was. So Colby's gonna probably have to push here to speed up his boat. So that's a crab stroke he just did there where he had his oar tucked in to the nose of the boat. So Colby's pushing right there to catch up the speed. So Colby's doing a crab stroke right there to adjust his boat again. Crab stroke's really important when you have two anglers in the boat to give both of them a, a fair angle at the fish. When you just have one angler, it's a lot easier to row your boat and get it into position and hold it, but two definitely ups the, ups the game. So he's got his, the stern of his boat pulled out because that's where he's trying to pull off the bank there. The crab stroke allows you to, to go downriver, but move your boat laterally so you're not moving down. You're just able to adjust where the boat is in relation to your flies or indicator. For me, the crab stroke was a game changer. Otherwise, I kept zigzagging out, pull out, go back, and I get the right line. I'd need to get a little further out, so I'd go further out. I'm like, well, there's got to be an easier way. And guess what there is? Yep, it just takes lots of practice. It takes rub your tummy and pat your head for like five hours. <laughs> yep, exactly. All right, so right here, I've messed up and got myself in a bad spot. I'm coming into this big boulder here. Um, I got a little sleeper just under the water there and then these two. So my best move, instead of trying to push and panic and get out of here, I'm gonna just go as slow as I can right now and just come in. If, if I'm gonna hit these rocks, I just wanna do it as slow and, and soft as possible. So right now, my boat's going so slow, I have total control of it. I'm just gonna point the, the stern of my boat away from the danger, point the nose out the danger, and the, the rocks are just gonna push me off of the danger. But if you panic and try to go too quickly into stuff, that's where you get into, into trouble. So in this pool, um, back in, I believe it was 98, Charlie Card was guiding some clients in here and the water was 10,600. There was a huge, this was a giant eddy. So about, the water is about seven, eight feet higher than it is right now. And in the middle, it was a huge moss ball just getting churned. And there were two just monster fish on it. So Charlie comes by with the streamers and gets the smaller of the two to peel off and, and chase it, but he didn't eat it. So he pulls over, re-rigs, puts on some nymphs and keeps working them, working them. And finally gets one of the, he gets the smaller of the two to, to eat a, um, blood midge, you know, on 5X. And he fights this fish for about a half hour, just running laps through here, staying on top of the fish. Gets it in, it's 33 inches. And he said that the other fish that he was fishing to was way bigger. <laughs> but that's, that's the largest trout I know of caught on fly tackle out here. Uh, um, yeah. All right, so we're coming in. I'm gonna show you what to do if, if you accidentally hit a rock. So I'm gonna, put my nose of the boat up on this boulder here and you know definitely don't try to do this so now I've got stuck right so the best thing to do would be to hurry and spin the boat off that rock so you've had all the rowing instruction technique that you could handle. But now it's gonna get serious. We're gonna go through a rapid called Mother-in-Law. Got a lot of features in there, some hydraulics and change of direction that would be good. So Scott's gonna walk us through, or I should say row us through and kind of talk about how these techniques that we've covered 
will now come into play. So we're gonna go into mother-in-law rapid here. Um, I've checked behind me to make sure no boats are coming in too quick on my, on my tail so I don't get into trouble that way. Um, coming into the rapid, the river tends to push you into the wall over there. You're way better off hitting the wall than you are the giant boulder that's barely out of water down there. So my first time rowing this rapid, I hit that rock and put a huge ding in my boat that later turned into a hole. So you definitely don't want to hit that rock. You know, as I said, the wall's safer. Um, just kind of follow that same pattern, follow that V into the rapid. And then we're going to use, you know what, we went over just pulling and slowing the boat down and then pointing the nose of the boat right at the danger. So right now the river's at 2,400 CFS, so pretty safe float for out here. Um, you know, this one's a lot trickier when the water's like 800 CFS. There's a lot of boulders to, just to the left side of that giant boulder. And that giant boulder has a huge flat face that'll, you know, rafts get stuck on there and trapped for days on it sometimes. So right now I'm just making sure I have a wide enough berth around that big boulder so I don't hit it. And now I can point my nose at the wall that I don't hit, want to hit, and then it starts slowing, slowing the boat down. And again, I'm just pointing my nose in the big wave so I don't take in too much water. And once you get about here, you're, you're safe to start fishing again. So this rapid is called Dead Man's Rapid. Um, there's one giant boulder out in the middle, just below where that boat ahead of us is. Um, so that giant boulder, you can go either right side or left side of it. This guy's going to the left of it, and we're gonna go to the right of it. Most of the rapids on the green, you wanna either go middle or to the right side. Mother-in-law is the one exception where you wanna go left. And then just pulling into it, I'm pointing my nose at, at what I do not want to hit. And then again, just going to slow down into, into it. But you can see if, if you went up on that, you'd be stuck and you could easily sink your boat right there. And then there's a, a sleeper rock right here on the right. You know, the flow's at 2,400 right now, so this is exposed a lot of the time. And you got Charlie coming through it. Charlie will probably do something a little off kilter. Yeah, spin a 360. Yeah, or 360, there. maybe a back uh, twick, tip, twist, <laughs> half flip. Triple Lindy. Yeah. So etiquette wise, an another thing that drives people crazy out here is when somebody rows down the bank and, and fishes right down the bank. So you want to keep your boat, you know, a casting distance off of the bank and have your people cast to the bank. So that requires you. Basically what's happening is the water where my boat is, is moving faster than the water on the bank. So you've just got to constantly be slowing the boat down a little bit to allow your anglers to fish down that. But then that's basically just being courteous to everybody behind you. Cause if you row right down the bank, you're spooking every fish that's there off the bank. And then it's, you know, it takes a good 20 or so minutes to reset for everybody else behind you. Another etiquette thing that would be terrible to do right now would be to, I'm, my boat's on the right side, would be to cut over to the left side and start fishing like in front of these guys. You would definitely, as you should get yelled at for doing that, you know, just. If you're going to cross the river, you know, always look behind you. Make sure there's not other boats coming before, before you do that. So I'm coming into ramp two. If I were to push into that current right there, it would throw the boat. And I could definitely sink it because you have these fast currents that the boat's in and that super slow water to the left. So now I'm just backing my boat in, just easing it back in here. But anytime if you hit those transitions of the, of the big water speed hard, you could definitely sink your boat. Okay, now, thanks to Scott here with Spinnerfall, you know all the moves and the fancy maneuvers to get your boat down the river safely. Watch this video many times. Luckily, we didn't have Cheech here 
or else the filming would have been much more difficult <laughs> because wide break. <laughs>